Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100 pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. When my brother was little, I just remember, since I was four years older than he is, I just remember him putting his little arms out and saying, Holdy, holdy. In other words, hold me, hold me. And then I also remember that sometimes we had a niece or a nephew who would say something similar in a different way. But the one thing that we don't have this year is the opportunity to hold me to our friends and family and children and brothers and sisters. And some do, but many don't. And we need to be very aware of those who are hurting this year and even those who will be spending Christmas entirely alone. I know that many of you have told me that you would love to be able to fly and visit a family member somewhere, but you just may have gone through something medically or something, you know, technically that you should not go through the procedure of going into the airports, going through the security, being in the crowds. Even though people are wearing masks, theoretically, we're safe to travel now. That's what everybody is saying. But how do we know? Are we ever really safe I know that you've seen the statistics where they say, oh, you're safer flying in an airplane than you are driving. And that's probably true because when you have the car accidents and the wrecks and going through all of that, and I've had, well, my share of mishaps, let's just say, (laughs) I won't tell you that they called me crash peppers at the radio where I used to work, but they did. So anyway, I don't want to make light of this because there are going to be more people flying, more people in the airports, more people on the roads, more people on trains, more people traveling this year to see loved ones. But when we start to do that, you don't get to do the same as you used to do. I was the biggest smiler and greeter of people. And I would reach down to a little girl in a stroller or maybe to a mom that was holding her and say, oh, how cute and pinch her little cheeks and give them both a hug. You can't do that now. You can't hug people at random. Some of your own friends and relatives don't want to be hugged because they don't want to be exposed and they're afraid. COVID and now all of the other new strands that have come out are really frightening to a lot of people. I know that many of us feel sometimes maybe even too much trustingly that, oh, what's it going to hurt? Just hug somebody. Just give them a kiss. I always used to brag that of all of the 10,000 students that I taught through the years, I have hugged all of them. Couldn't say that today. That would be an absolute no-no on the list of things teachers are not to do, not only because of COVID and the other strains of flus and diseases, but also because of being sexually and politically correct these days. You just can't interact with people like you used to do. And that's really hard for those of us who were huggers and just like to pat on people's backs or, you know, acknowledge them somehow, because I guess my love language is the physical hug and the love language that some people have isn't receiving hugs. So just because you want to give one doesn't mean others want to receive one. I know that this will be a Christmas better than last year, Lord willing. But what about for next year? We don't know. One of my students just posted a picture of his table that's already set for Christmas because we had one of our fellow students. It was someone that uh, many of my students have been in contact with. We all are in contact with him on Facebook. And he was an attorney, and he just died 
in the room where he was to file a deposition. He had been traveling and he was in his own hotel room and didn't show up for the deposition. This is a young man, what, 30 years younger than I am, 40 maybe, but he had passed away in his room and his wife and two children. He was not brain dead yet. So they had rushed him to the hospital when they found out that he was just not even moving, wasn't mobile, wasn't responding. And they rushed his wife and his two children, flew them out to the East Coast where he was, so that they could at least, in closure, give their goodbyes. I can't even imagine that happening any time, much less right here a week or two before Christmas. So one of his good buddies who was also one of my students, set this beautiful table up. And he's not one to do this, let me tell you. I don't know. I'm not saying that his girlfriend or wife or whoever it is didn't do it, but it's beautiful. And he said, I just learned this week that life is too short. Use your good china. I know there was a lady named Irma Bombeck that used to write all kinds of things like that, that before I get old... And then she said, well, I guess I already am old. I will use my good china. I will tell my friends and family members how much I love them. I will use my good sheets. I will look in the closets with the clothes that have been packed away that I didn't want to wear because I was saving them for something good. Well, this is good, my friends. This is the time. Wear it. Use it. Eat that cookie. Buy that new dress. Use your good china. Put the table out. And some of us would even say, hug those who want to hug. So I will ask you before I hug you. And if you say no, I understand. And I'll just give you an air hug and squeeze you in my heart. That's what I always say. I have so many friends and family members that I couldn't possibly be with all of them this year, but we'll be with some and we'll have great celebratory times. This is the first time my husband will have traveled out of state in, what, two years. But the best news of all is that when you get an opportunity to be with a loved one, when you get to see a friend or a family member or a former student, or a former teacher, or co-worker, and you can't hug them, you can at least acknowledge what it is that you love or loved about being with them, and take the time, the time, the time to really stop and interact with them. Because it's true, life is too short. There's one thing that I do know for sure, though, that there's a great scripture in 1 Peter 4 where Um, the apostle, Peter, is addressing the church, and he is telling them to have hospitality. It actually says in 1 Peter verse 4, starting at chapter 4, I'm sorry, starting at verse 7, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. If anyone is a speaker, they should use their mouth and speak the very words of God. That's what I have. I have the big gift of gab. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides. Some of you have a great servant's heart. You are humble, but you love to be hospitable and to have people over. Some of you have the gift of administration or the gift of helps or whatever it is. Use it and use it as unto the Lord. So that's my prayer. Not that we can perhaps be with the people this Christmas that we'd all like to be with or even hug those that we're with, but we can give the gift that never quits giving, the love of Christ. And we can also be sure that there is one thing, that when we know what our particular gift is, and if it's serving, serve with a big heart. If it's speaking, speak words of affirmation and encouragement and share God's love, for he's one who will never leave us or forsake us. 
And he is the reason that we can say to him, not in a physical sense, but spiritual, God, I need a hug today. Will you wrap your arms around me, Lord, and just give me your strength, your love, and your peace that passes all understanding? I pray that often, and I pray that for you, my friend. God bless you. And don't get bogged down with all of the trappings of Christmas. Celebrate the real reason. Yeah, we say Jesus is the reason for the season. Sounds cliche, but it's so true. Without him, you don't have Christmas. You can call it Buddhamus, or you can call it um, atheistmus, or you can call it nothingmus. But if you have Christ in your heart, every day can be Christmas, and God will hug you. God bless you, my friends. Thanks for being with me. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.